Okay, forgot that. So. Yeah, I know. Recording's in progress. All right. Anyway, so this morning, uh, what are you all about? What's your focus? What's your determination? What's your passion? What's your motivation? What drives you in life? And this morning, I, I, I'm excited to share with you my life verse, my life focus, what I want my life to be all about. And, uh, and I, I want to relate it to the journey in recovery and, and how it could help shape a person's recovery. So from Philippians chapter 1, verse 20, it says this, For I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed, but will have sufficient courage so that now as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or death. From the New Living Translation, we read this. For I fully expect and hope that I will never be ashamed, but will, I will continue to be bold for Christ as I have been in the past. And I trust that my life will bring honor to Christ, whether I live or whether I die. From the Amplified, it says this. It is my own eager expectation and hope that looking toward the future, I will not disgrace myself or be ashamed in anything, but will have courage and the utmost freedom of speech so that now as always Christ will be magnified and exalted in my body, whether by life or by death. So here's what this verse means to me, and I'll seek to apply it to you guys as we listen this morning. And of course, putting it in the context of the journey that you and I are on to become the man God wants us to be. I lit it up yesterday with one guy. I told him, I said, look, I tell you, if you come back to this office and you want to come and work with me, I said, I will call you to greatness. I will not call you to be average. If you want to be flaky, if you want to be whatever, I says, this is the wrong place. You want to become God's man. You, you want to be called to greatness? Come back here. And uh, matter of fact, one young man that uh, might be joining us after Christmas he, uh, he sent me a text. He says, I appreciate your prayer. This was Monday, uh, Monday morning early. He said, I appreciate your prayer today. I, I read your article about uh, coming clean and I'm going to open up to my wife about something else I hadn't confessed to her. I know it's not going to be easy for her, but I just really feel God speaking to me. Thank you for calling me to greatness. And he's only like about 26 year old married man. I just, wow, I was proud of him. Called to greatness. What are you all about? What's driving you? What's your focus? And so, so let's look at these, these five considerations from, from Philippians chapter 1, verse 20. Rugged anticipation. I eagerly expect and hope. Not just I expect and hope, or I hope, or I expect. But I eagerly expect and hope. There, there's, there's no maybes in this. Eager is excited, focused, leaning in anticipating it's like it's like and maybe you you've had this experience but I, I ran a little track in high school and, and you're you're down in the blocks or for me uh, I wasn't fast enough to be uh, often in the the finals of those things but I'd be part of the four by one lap relay and I would be in the second leg usually try to hide me and and and, and but I'd be anticipating it's coming it's coming he's coming get ready Start to run now, toss, go, right? You know, the handoff. And But you see, there's an anticipation. There, there's an eagerness. Uh, let's go, let's go. Um, and and, and so, so when it says, I eagerly expect and hope, expect is you're assuming something. You're expecting something. You got on the call this morning. You had a, well, maybe not eager expectation, but you had an expectation that Curry or somebody's going to deliver something that's going to encourage me. You see, and hope is something that we look forward to, that we're confident, we believe in a desired future. Like I am confident. I, I, I really would like to bet on the fact, so there's a pretty strong hope here, that men who stay consistent and regroup for the season of establishing recovery and launching themselves to a life of integrity and purity that that would happen here, that there's a, there, there better be a, a rugged a, 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 a excitement, uh, an eagerness to be here anticipating something good's going to happen. So it starts, it starts out with that, 
that there's this rugged anticipation that I eagerly expect and hope that I want something from my future. I'm determined. I want to have that part of my future. Secondly, I will in no way be ashamed. Strong clarification. Life clarification. That I would walk as Jesus would walk. That I would speak as Jesus would speak. That I'd love as Jesus would love. I'll be in no way ashamed that everything I do in public would honor him. And everything I do in private would honor him. So whether public or private, my life honors him. <clears throat> There's nothing about what I do that I would be ashamed of. No way ashamed. You see, you see, the, the true definition of integrity is who I am when nobody else is watching is who I am. And who I am privately and who I am publicly is the same thing. I've had the uh, privilege of getting to know people away from the platform, away from the public eye, away from the notoriety, people that are quite well known. And I just could throw out two names out there that I've had the privilege of getting to know uh, considerably in one case, but the famous Canadian I icon, Paul Henderson, uh, those of you who are older will know this as the the man who sco scored three game-winning goals in the very first summit series between Canada and Russia uh, to win the series. Um, it, it was called the sport moment of the century, uh, the goal of the century, um, Paul's goal. And Paul's a wonderful, committed Christian in the Lord. And you know what? Paul Henderson, away from the mic, Paul Henderson, away from speaking, he leads a large ministry that mentors men much like this. Um, Paul is the real deal. Paul, away from the mic, is the same straight shooting uh, man of integrity. Uh, he, he, matter of fact, he embarrasses me. My faith is so shallow compared to his. It is, it is such a motivator. But who he is away from the microphone when he's talking, and yeah, it's good to be here. You know, I'm speaking to thousands again. And the other one that that really impressed me is uh, Chuck Swindoll uh, from Insight for a Living. I had occasion to when I first met Chuck. That was an incredible moment uh, because um, Chuck that morning was going to speak at Dallas Seminary Chapel, and uh, Stephen, my good friend from down there, who we've been lifelong friends. He's a teacher there, and he, we were visiting Steve, and he says, well, listen, let's go to chapel today, and, and, and I'll introduce you to Chuck. I said, oh, no, I don't want to take his time. You know, I've been listening to him my whole life, right? And, and uh, when Stephen introduced me to Chuck, I remember, here, here's a guy that's going to be president of this school, and he's going to be speaking in, you know, five, seven minutes. And, you know, one of the teachers is introducing their friend to Chuck Swindoll, and he stopped what he was doing, and he just listened and, and, and he was focused on me and he was asking me questions about who you are. So you've been friends with Steve for a while. How did you meet him and all this kind of stuff? And, and even people are going by to the, you know, the little three of us talking in the hallway. Did, morning, Chuck. Morning, Chuck. He didn't say good morning to one person. He locked in like I was the only person in the world. I'm so impressed by that. But now I'm going from my fifth time in March to Israel with the Insight for Living Ministry. And I've had meals with Chuck and Cynthia and my wife and uh, who this guy away from the radio personality speaking pastor guy this guy is the real deal it's so amazing to see a person because this is what we're talking about it doesn't matter whether it's public or private the guy is true blue the guy is the guy is consistent and this is what we're trying to say here that there's no way nothing that i do will cause me to feel ashamed embarrassed regretful humiliated but who I am publicly and who I am privately is the same person. That, they, that, that, that when God works in my life, that, that I will, by God's grace, Jesus. Matter of fact, um, one of my prayers every Wednesday morning with my own accountability partner, we'll be together for 90 minutes tomorrow morning. He and I will be meeting together. We're in our 32nd year now. And, uh, you know, Lord, I pray the things that we say and do today would honor you. The things we say and do today would honor you. Jesus, take me through one day that what I say and what I do would honor you. 
you see strong clarification. Uh, it's clear that, that you live for Jesus. It's clear that your life is different, that you live to not bring shame to Jesus, that you don't live with regrets. What a, what a powerful way to live. So you have this rugged anticipation that expects something's going to happen. You have this strong clarification that I will be ashamed. And then there's this bold determination, but we'll have sufficient courage. If you're going to become God's best, if you're going to really ask God to help you to deal with this addiction, if you're going to really make a difference and let God make your life into a legacy, there's going to need to be some courage, bold determination. It's interesting. He says, but we'll have sufficient. I have enough courage. Usually we just have enough courage to do what's right. But, but you constantly have sufficient courage to do what is right. That I won't be ashamed, but I'll have sufficient courage. That I'll have this radical, fearless commitment and follow through that I won't be a wussy. I'll push through my fears. I'll stay in my lane and control what I can do. But boy, will I push. I will push myself. I'll be determined. I'll be courageous. I won't hold back. I'll bravely do what I need to do. If you haven't heard it yet, I think you're not listening, but I'll pretend you haven't. If you haven't heard it yet, running parallel to coming to regroup and being encouraged and making calls and building up one another, checking in, there's some material that we have chosen to focus on called The Final Freedom. And it's the 12-step book that's going to allow you to Work through the issues that have held you back. Work through the issues that have messed you up. And you do it on your own time. And if you were in a program that all they did was work on the 12th step, just, just know, just know that it's going to take about, I don't know, one step a month, it's a lot of hard work. Some are easier than others. And, uh, but determination, I'm gonna do what I need to do. I'll have courage, not just, oh yeah, well, yeah, I got a book someplace and you haven't looked at it for months. Because the book is gonna make you face hard things. The book is gonna cause you to make amends with others. The, the book is gonna, cause you to look at some of your soul wounds your hurts and and uh, where you might have resentments and and it's going to deal with some of the junk inside and because it's specifically you working on it with the questions in mind you get to work on you to become the man god wants you to be and yes you share that journey with another brother and you share it and you talk and and different things but but gentlemen there's this commitment there's fearless follow-through that you will have sufficient courage. So rugged anticipation, strong clarification of your life, bold determination to follow through, and then it's a clear continuation. So that now, as always, so that now, as always, as always, like I have in the past and like I will in the future, so right now, as always, front and back, See, see there's, there's this today, tomorrow, the next day. It's all the same thing. There's one thing going on in my life. That, that's this, this Christ's call for greatness is what I'm about. I will be a transformed man. I will be a transformed man. So that now, today, as always, in the past and the future, just on the weekend, it was such an honor to invite five more men to be in the Thousand Day Club. Five more guys. And because of COVID, we, 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 we delayed getting together because of the, the rules and all. 
So one guy was already at 1,400. He'd been, he'd been hit a thousand days well over a year ago. And, uh, and, and, and it, was, it was so fun to hear their stories and welcome them into the thousand day club and then have the other five guys who have been a thousand days or more to speak into their life and tell them, well, how did they make it to 2,600 or, or, or 1,700 or 1,900 or whatever? And, and, and then the prayer together and the encouragement as we welcome the new guys and, and celebrated with them. See, clear continuation is 1,000 days, but it's one day at a time, one day at a time. Dare I say, one day at a time. Live for Jesus today. Walk in purity today. It's consistency. It's reliability. It's finishing strong. Some of you have been in my office um, at um, not the home office here, although some of you may have been here too, because I do counsel here sometimes. But my, my, my office, the DFR office, there is uh, right below my, my big whiteboard where it opens up and I write in coaching instructions, life instructions, counseling help on that board. There's a, a, there's a large, um, it's likely a, a 10 by 13 book. And the book is about um, uh, Billy Graham, Christ's ambassador. And I've been out here 31, almost 32 years from Saskatchewan. And for at least five years in Saskatchewan, I've had a picture or something along the lines of Billy Graham in my office. Why? Because Billy Graham is a guy who played well, finished strong. So that now as always, he finished strong. Matter of fact, if you know the stories of some of the famous evangelists or worldwide Bible speaker guys, Sadly, when they pass away, stuff comes up about their life and their life gets discredited. You know what I'm saying? And I don't like naming names to glorify in a negative way, poor choices. But one thing I do know, there's only one human being that has laid in state in the White House that wasn't a president. After his death, Billy Graham was laid in state because he prayed with five different presidents during his life. And, and he was so respected and honored. And since he's passed away, nobody is bringing up, well, did you hear this about Billy Graham? Well, we found this story, that story. Matter of fact, the story goes that he walked with such a desire for credibility in authenticity, so that now as always, his life would be a testimony that he wouldn't go out on a balcony in a hotel room. He wouldn't go out on the balcony for fear that someone who's trying to defame him would take a picture of him looking in a direction and then make a story about, oh, look at Billy Graham looking because they would shoot another picture allegedly of someone who's maybe not dressed too appropriately on another balcony that he was looking down on. He says, I won't, I won't go out on a balcony. I won't. Matter of fact, I won't get into an elevator if I'm the only one in there with another. Now, he didn't travel alone very much, but he would get out of an elevator if he was the only one in it and that woman stepped in. He would just step out and let go and he'd go up. Now, that's, that's, that's consistency. That's, that's continuation. And that's what God wants. God wants so that now as always, that there's this past, present, and future. I'm going to surrender my life and live for him. And then the final one is life exaltation. That Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or death. That Jesus is lifted up, exalted lifted up, pointed to, that I'm a mirror, that when people look at me, they see a reflection of Jesus. 
because my life is, is so in touch with him that I reflect Jesus to people, that you reflect Jesus to people. That we look at you, they look in a mirror and see Jesus because he's lifted up. <clears throat> that everything you do points to him and what he has done in your life and what he has done through your life. And this is the power of a life well lived. <clears throat> and I talked about Billy Graham's life testimony and Billy Graham's death testimony, and they're so consistent. I talk to you about Paul Henderson, and we talk every week on the phone and encourage one another, pray together. We did on Friday again. And uh, this is Paul. He says, Curry, Curry, if you hear, he's out in Toronto, if you hear that I'm out here doing something stupid, that I'm somehow doing something that's going to dishonor the Lord. He says, you get in a plane and you fly to Toronto and you shoot me. Just shoot me, Curry. I don't want to be a stupid man who doesn't finish strong. And so when we pray together, every time we're on the phone, uh, we pray together pretty much. And, and uh, Lord, help us to finish strong. Lord, help us to finish strong. That Christ will be exalted in your body, gentlemen. Interesting. In your body, everything about what you do in your body, with your body. That Christ will be exalted in your body, whether by life or death. I'll share with you my life verse. I'll share with you what drives me. Gentlemen, Philippians 1.20, for I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed, but will have sufficient courage so that now as always, Christ will be exalted in my life, whether by life or by death. I want my life to count. I call you to greatness. May you do the same in how you live, how you walk, and how you do your recovery. Amen.